Welcome to The Human Project, your podcast for inspiring stories. I am Corina Rosa Falkenberg. In a minute, I do have the pleasure to speak to Jelena Devi. Jelena was born in Switzerland and raised by a mother from Jamaica. She is full of deep fire, passion, sensuality and sexuality. And I would like to find out in today's conversation how we can all incorporate more this, let's call it Tantra feeling, in our daily lives. Let's start with it right now. <laughs> Helena. Yes. <laughs> I met you in a dancing class. Mm. And I was so fascinated by the way you were moving, your hips, your shoulder. <laughs> and not just that, it's the expression on your face. It's like you were totally in the dance, you know? Mm -hmm. And it was an improvised dance, though you didn't know what happened. You were just going with the flow, with the music, and you went just in it. You didn't care who was watching, mm -hmm. who was judging you, yeah? Mm -hmm. You just went in there. And this is what I got out of this beautiful dance during the mm -hmm. dance class. Mm -hmm. So how does it come that you can move so fabulously? <laughs> And me not. <laughs> hey, that will come. <laughs> that will come. Yeah, I feel really blessed. Um To, yeah, to, to feel so comfortable in my body and also to have had a gift of, mm -hmm. of getting this dance initiation early from my mom, who's Jamaican. Mm -hmm. And in that way, I really feel it's just been, you know, given to me as a gift to, 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 to blossom from. And mm -hmm. I've had many journeys through it, but now mm -hmm. definitely I'm at a phase where I have had enough of like technical practices where I've explored uh, on a professional basis dance and, and then also gone into just total free dance. And now I really love to, to bring both together and to encourage people that, you know, we can be like childlike and it's fun <laughs> to explore new movements mm -hmm. and new steps and at the same time integrate them into our body. And for me, like dance is the language of the soul. It's mm -hmm. really like one of the most ancient ways to express what's going on inside of us, mm -hmm. you know, so it's so beautiful to bring that out. And I think I'm just full of joy <laughs> for life. Of course, not always, but really, mm -hmm. I feel my commitment is really to show up in the best way that I can every day and to to really honor the sacredness and the gift of life. Mm -hmm. mm. Beautiful. So how can I picture your youth? <laughs> you were with your mom. And mm -hmm. your mom is from Jamaica. Your dad mm -hmm. is from Switzerland. Yes. So a uh, more or less different cultural background. <laughs> yeah. Did he dance with you around in the kitchen? <laughs> no, he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, I mean, yeah, I really grew up with a lot of contrast. That's interesting. Mm. I realized that when I was a teenager, I was like, ah, oh, not everyone has like this kind of mm -hmm. two cultures at home. Um, so, yeah, it was just actually, I would say, kind of quite entertaining if you would watch our family from mm -hmm. the outside, because my mom is like super fiery and playful and sexy and dancing around like somewhere between fairy and queen. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, yeah. Really? Yeah. She can be very childish and funny. <laughs> and at the same time, she's like this super Jamaican proud queen that just knows her worth and no one has anything to say to her. And wow, this is a very hot mix. Yes, she's really like, you know, she's she's mm -hmm. just stunning. She's so special. And my dad in a different way, also very, very unique. So he's very, uh, you know, grounded and quiet. He doesn't move uh, much and he never really danced with us. So Tell he me, he doesn't move much. No. Interesting, but your mom is turning on the radio and is just yes. like moving her hips. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> that's how it was. Yes, uh -huh. so they definitely chose a relationship of you know big contrast mm -hmm. and. Um, Yeah, I mean, as a as a young girl, I, I just thought that's normal. And, and in a way, I guess, as a girl, you identify more with your mother. So mm -hmm. for me, it was so, like, beautiful and exciting. Actually, mm -hmm. I feel, when I think back, it feels like it was exciting. Because every day was like... Uh, 
a celebration or a party basically my mom would always find a reason why we celebrate and put on some nice music and I could see how when she listens to music her sweet reggae songs I, I could see how her energy shifts and she becomes more relaxed and she smiles and her body becomes more soft and I think you know subconsciously I've witnessed this and like ah oh, that's a that's a good thing to do and I just witnessed you because <laughs> while you were speaking to your mom your whole body was yeah. moving and you were almost like dancing and here's no music it was so sweet like you were dancing even with your fingers mm -hmm. your arms your shoulder mm -hmm. your whole body was in a It was very juicy to mm, observe you. So yeah. this was also your mom. She yeah. she was moving and dancing and um, going also with the rhythm of life then. Yeah, to mm. totally, totally. And she really, my mom doesn't care what anyone thinks of her. And I think that's kind of a bit of a Jamaican trait. They're very strong um, personalities, very proud people. And... In that way, I feel there's just mm -hmm. a superpower in the people on the island. So positive. Um, and, you know, in that way, I just feel she she just took every opportunity to celebrate. So I even remember when we would go shopping, you know, like grocery shopping. In my child memories, it's also another party because we just come into this big shopping mall full of nice things. There's music playing and we dance around. And I, I honestly have memories where me and my mom would like do little dance performances in the mall. And there are like grandparents and families around us and we are dancing to Together and people yes, yeah. are either joining us or lighting up some might pass and think we're crazy but really I remember that it was um yeah definitely we always had a, we, we, we had a lot of attention because mm -hmm. my mom would be you know loud and joyful and dance around and I did it with her up to mm -hmm. a certain age <laughs> you know <laughs> not forever but up to a certain age I mean I do remember you know I, I guess it's when you're like 12, I don't know exactly, but when I'm maybe 12, I think I started getting a bit like embarrassed and, you know, I could see how, um, cause I'm very sensitive. So I could sometimes then sense when people would judge her and then that would make me feel uncomfortable. So I would be ah. like embarrassed for her that others don't, um, you know, feel comfortable around her. So Because it's also the Swiss her mentality. combination, like being so, I mean, it's also intimidating, right? When yeah. someone's just showing up, mm -hmm. likes, as you just described, mm -hmm. her, her body, her appearance, yeah. her way of dancing, mm -hmm. because a lot of people are lacking this kind of self-confidence. Yes. And when you are then maybe surrounded by someone who's so fully present mm -hmm. and enjoy the one and the personality one is having, yeah. it might frighten other people yeah. because they are mirrored. It's right. exactly true what you say. I, I totally mm -hmm. resonate with that. And I I mean, now as a grown up, I know, yeah, it's also the Swiss culture. I mean, in mm -hmm. Jamaica, that wouldn't happen. <laughs> Because you were growing up in Switzerland yes, the whole time. Yes, you yes. went to Jamaica for a visit. Yes, exactly. But you were growing up in Switzerland. Ah, yeah. yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So we were always in that culture. And yeah, I think it's, it's a part of growing up as a child. You want to fit in. So mm -hmm. in that mm -hmm. way, my let's say my dad's behavior how I would learn how to behave at school was more appropriate to the norm mm -hmm. my mom would fall out because she would cause yeah people to look or you know so but my mom was always living like you know either you love me or just leave me like that's, oh. that's who I am cool. she really had this so solid and I think mm -hmm. to be honest it took me a few years to to learn it because again I'm such a empathic and sensitive person you know so for me it was always uncomfortable Comfortable when I could feel people are looking at us or thinking like oh what that's your mom like doesn't she have a husband she dances way too sexy and I'm wow. like oh okay a kind of judgment yeah which yeah is, lots of oh, it's judgment. a very hard judgment yeah uh, of course yeah. she was a married woman yeah <laughs> but um it's she, still viewed as a kind of threat or challenge or not appropriate yeah when you're married and show up sexy mm -hmm. yeah right there mm -hmm. is for a lot of people still a contradiction yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah so that's you know i would say that's how it used to be i mean for me now i don't i don't live or believe in this anymore but as mm -hmm. a young girl yeah. you want to fit in and you think that's the norm and also for my mom i mean she definitely had quite a few moments of conf confrontation where people would confront her and she would have to be really Uh, honest and strict like one extreme situation is that she um 
actually and I know I can share that but she went through breast cancer Mm -hmm. and um for her moving was her like most powerful medicine Mm -hmm. to stay healthy and Mm -hmm. to 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 get healthy again so she would always go to the gym so she was a bit like a movement addict but then in the gym she would dance or like put her headphones on and start like singing and dancing loud (laughs) so anyway it, it came so far that there were some people in the gym that were so offended like you know maybe one or two elderly men and actually at the end they they like um told her that she has to leave the gym they oh. they sent her out wow. so that was super tough uh, to witness and i was like what is this society because it's the most healthy thing i mean that's what i'm teaching mm-hmm. people now to move to breathe to sound to move energy out mm-hmm. i mean that's like natural and as I say, my mom's a natural like woman who who remembers how to stay healthy and beautiful, and you know I, it just was so so crazy to witness that the world is sometimes not ready for these people. But I I, I pray and I know that in the next generations we are creating something new. But yeah, it was not always easy for her to 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 be in such a kind of um, you know like a small-minded western society which has so many beautiful parts Mm -hmm. to it but in terms of liberated movement and dance it's definitely um, been a journey for me to to witness her and feel very close to her as a child and then as a teenager starting to oh no I don't want to be judged so I don't want to be like her Mm -hmm. and I didn't want to be feminine in that way I mean yeah I I started ballet and I like that I just jump in there because I think it's very interesting because you have nonetheless a very so what I hear yeah, out of your words, yeah. impersonating woman as a mother, yeah, like a yeah. kind of modern role, yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. role model that is, she is there, she loves herself, she's doing yeah. what she wants, yeah. she doesn't care whether she is judged in general, right? <laughs> yes. So one would say, well, that's the ideal mother because then yeah. you can grow, but for yeah. you something else happened. Yeah, <laughs> totally. <laughs> no, it's true. It's true. Like in a way. I also could see that in, uh, you know, friends. They're mm-hmm. like, oh, you have such a cool mom, and I'm like. <laughs> inside of myself feeling really guilty because um you know and I mean I went through a big journey with my mom so I can say this but sometimes I really wished I would have had another mother who is more quiet who is more like you know um motherly in a way of yes darling I hear you I hold you my mom it was like it was a bit like tough love you know mm-hmm. so she she never went into my like um she never bought into when i'm like uh coming from a place of not really living my wholeness or like oh moaning around or I can't do this I, I this and that so she was always very um encouraging to 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 remind me like hey it's gonna be okay or you can do this I believe in you you know like always this kind of energy Mm -hmm. so very supportive but of course I mean now I would say I can also see that another aspect was missing of just being present for me but I understand it comes from her also having to be like a really strong uh, warrior survivor spirit you know she she like basically had to raise herself and she um was moving from Jamaica to England when she was five years old and um, in that time her mom had to work and she never had a dad who kind of was at her side Um, her dad never accepted her as a daughter so in Jamaica you have also many like side um uh like children that come from 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 Not love affairs yeah, yeah exactly so in that way my mom had to be really strong so your mom was um the result of a love affair that yeah. was not in the frame of a marriage exactly mm-hmm. yeah exactly so and her dad denied her he didn't accept her as a daughter no no mm-hmm. no so that's been a big big part definitely and um yeah so so in that way she's always had to be strong for herself and that's what she wanted for me of course so anytime and then she has this super sensitive <laughs> daughter which is me <laughs> which is of course perfection of the universe <laughs> and you know it was a journey for her because I then had to also claim to be heard you know so we we weren't best friends for for quite a long time mm. and and it was tough because of course you want to love your mother but then you're like she doesn't really love me how I am and this whole you know this whole conversation but um I think you know when did it really drop actually I think when she went through cancer 
she had a big shift and I I think something something in her softened and also I think um I had a big wake up call of course because mm. I was like whoa I don't know how how much longer I will um have my mom and it was a huge shock I was I think what was I maybe 19 or 21 something like that and I think in that time we really met each other in a closer way mm. and I started to understand that if I want to really live as a fully embodied like radiant empowered woman I need to heal my relationship with my mom mm. and and look at where I'm still like oh what is this and ah this feels uncomfortable <laughs> when she does this and mm -hmm. I could see you know I could see the whole um journey of why I made which decisions and it was very powerful uh, to, to just go closer and closer to her and now just feeling really we you know we honor each other fully for who we are and I'm actually laughing sometimes because I can see I'm much more similar to her <laughs> than, <laughs> than I ever, funny thing than I I ever wanted myself, to be I'm yes. like Oh no, oh. now I'm the one dancing the whole time, yeah. like at home and like, <laughs> you know, showing off. And I, I, I mean, yeah, I, I love to be a woman and I love my body and I can see now how much fun it is to, to express mm. that beauty through dance. And that's, you know, that's from her. I think what you described is such a <laughs> classical journey. Like you think like you're not like your mom. No, you are not. And then you reach a point where you say, oh no, I can't believe to what extent I'm similar to her, right? Mm -hmm. And then it comes, it's best to embrace it because if you deny, you deny a part within yourself. Exactly. And you're part of your personality. Yeah. So tell me, because again, I saw you dancing in this dancing <laughs> class and you need to ask you whether you want to be interviewed for my podcast. I mm -hmm. said, yes. Mm -hmm. So you, when I watched you dancing, you have full control of your body even mm. when you're in this kind of improvisational state of dancing mm. so how is it when you were growing up with this kind of body knowledge or consciousness about your own body mm. um do you have insecurities about your body like <laughs> my breasts yeah. are too small or i don't know <laughs> whatever mm. yeah it's actually such an interesting question um because i'm i feel i'm right now again in the next process to be honest you know that everything has like its waves mm -hmm. but generally speaking I do feel very comfortable in my body and I feel I have a very loving like connection for me I my, my body that, yeah. is my temple yeah. and I you know try and take care as much as I can and I also have this strong intuition in my body if something's going on so yeah but then I had a a memory actually so when I was younger um, I was naturally very fit and kind of you know good looking slim sporty type of girl and I remember a situation um, we had a sports day at the school and I was like I didn't even at that time I just put on clothes that my mom gave me so she gave me like super sexy hot pants <laughs> and a top <laughs> maybe my ass was looking out of it I don't know but yeah I didn't even think about it <laughs> And then I remember suddenly feeling this uncomfortable energy of many eyes on me. Mm -hmm. And it was a circle of girls sitting in a circle. They were a little bit older than me. And I was like so naive. I just go over and ask, hey, um, I saw someone was pointing at me. Were you talking <laughs> about? I just went over and asked. And then one of them just said, yeah, we were just looking at you and you have this amazing body. And like, what do you do? And I was like, uh what do I do? I said, well, yeah, you know, I go and dance ballet three times a week and that's just what I do. And I didn't even notice, um, I didn't see myself as something like beautiful or mm -hmm. special or I wouldn't look at bodies as something that is there to be judged, mm -hmm. basically. Mm -hmm. But I remember the energy of these women or these girls were like, I felt that it felt uncomfortable because I felt they want something from me that they don't have and this kind of feeling of jealousy. And I noticed um, that somehow I've had, you know, a, a path where I feel I've always felt good in my body and comfortable, but I actually really just recently in the last few weeks, I've noticed that I've been keeping myself just a little bit away from like going like I would say a hundred percent into like my full um physical expression of showing myself without any holding back so I feel like I've been living like under 80 percent which is 
still good and from the outside you wouldn't see it but I feel it inside that I still uh, was keeping so you see space to improvement yeah. for your body expression do you mean like just during dance or do you mean like even when you walk along the streets yeah actually I think it's everywhere mm. it's everywhere because it's still this like I can see at the end the expansion is mm -hmm. endless right so I can see that you know it's it's somehow because if you are how shall I say, the more we shine and the more beauty we express, in a way, you, you also attract uh, more attention. Mm -hmm. So it's actually a conscious decision in a way that we can make. How much do I want to uh, take or how much can I carry to be seen in that way? Mm -hmm. And yeah, so that's the thing. So it's been like a bit of a thing where I can observe, all oh, right, I, I didn't really want to be like in this full, like 100% mm -hmm. expression. But now in my life where I'm going towards is like, Yes, it's time, like totally. And I am also very artistic and creative person. So sometimes even I would imagine that I would even want to, you know, paint my face with kind of tribal paintings or mm, make I my hair special or like mm -hmm. turbans or special clothes, which actually bring out my, um, you know, my uh, essence even more. And I, I'm, I'm this kind of person. I love to celebrate life fully, you know. So I think as humans, in a way, you know, we could still do much more out of what we are because we're so beautiful and so individual. And uh, yeah, I can just observe that there is this shift still happening in me. When you say like there is still room for improvement mm -hmm. when it comes to your body expression yeah. and mm -hmm. daily life, mm -hmm. do you also mean like the feminine part do you mm. think you can even top this or don't you because you're so feminine mm. like the way you are talking the mm -hmm. way you are moving your fingers mm -hmm. the way you're showing up in this beautiful dress everything mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you're for me plus mm -hmm. more fem femininity mm -hmm. so do you do you say it's goes mm -hmm. in the direction of feminine energy mm. yeah so mm, i guess in a way i feel very comfortable and very deeply anchored mm -hmm. in my feminine energy um i i don't feel i'm like looking for anything in that area mm -hmm. in a way but as always life there is another layer and mm -hmm. there's another expansion and um <clears throat> yeah so in that way i guess Yes, I'm, 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 I'm the kind of person that will never settle <laughs> wherever <laughs> I am, you know, so I can see that, um, you know, I, I had the past few years where I've, I've been on this journey of deepening with my feminine and, and the self-love and the sisterhood and healing with the mother and everything. And I feel very comfortable where I am now, mm -hmm. but I am actually quite sure that it will deepen because mm -hmm. I want to deepen. So it comes more from a place of curiosity and staying mm -hmm. really open to the expansion and not settling just because mm -hmm. I feel, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm feminine. I feel good. No, I think it will go deeper and I, I am also interested to see how, you know, how much softer can I become and, and to dance between the masculine and the feminine inside of myself, um, to, to live as an empowered woman, but be really anchored in, in the heart. Yeah. And when you say that it's, I assume not only related the way how you are moving, but mm. also the way you are thinking, mm -hmm. you're expressing yourself mm. with other means, like also with words, like when it comes to relationships, like it's a holistic approach. Yeah, totally. Yes, I I feel it's it's a way of mm -hmm. life and for me again it's it's a it's the gift that we have to be alive and with being aware of the gift that we have mm -hmm. uh, we we kind of see everything as sacred mm -hmm. if it's a sister or a brother if it's mm -hmm. you know a, a tree and also when I dance you know I I like to give it as an offering to mm. to nature or then when I teach to the people or to myself so it's it's always a this feeling of it's sacred and and it's an offering to mm. to the universe back it, like mm. giving back my gratitude in creation and um <clears throat> I mean that's where also dance in a way like uh comes from in you know ancient times it's it's also a way of Uh, basically bridging the earth and the heavens and you become like empty so the more we can practice to become empty you can be filled with this mm. kind of uh, energy that wants to come through you and um, you can call it channeling or whatever becoming this um, empty vessel mm -hmm. and that's how I want to live so if I'm connecting 
with any humans or with nature. I want to really be connected to the earth, connected to the heavens, and then come from that place to the heart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would now like to go to a very special area in life, sexuality, mm -hmm. intimacy. Mm -hmm. Because when I was listening now, what you said, it's like life for you seems to be a dance. Mm -hmm. The deeper you get, the better. The more you know yourself, understand yourself. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to sexuality, a lot of people feel obstacles for themse mm -hmm. themselves. They maybe cannot release and let go. Mm -hmm. You who know your body, the movements, the softness that is in mm. there. What does sexuality and the reunion with another mm. person, with a lover, means to you? Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so beautiful. And it's true, it's close. Because mm -hmm. when you dance with someone, I would say, yeah, it's like your souls are meeting in a mm. way. If, if there's a openness from both sides <clears throat> and there's a magic where we can get out of the head and really into the body so for me yes i mean we all have a journey with sexuality and sexuality um but i noticed <clears throat> that for me i really um yeah i feel this commitment deep in my body to stand and to speak also for in a way a liberation and at the same time a very conscious way of relating i think it's it's like a, an area where um, I feel it's so important that we can see where we're limiting ourselves and where mm -hmm. we have patterns of what we think is right and what we don't think is right. So kind of deliberation, but at the same time, if it's just free and we are not mindful, then there is also a lot of messiness with because there's such a high energy to work with that can come in. So that's why I feel so much um, consciousness is needed. So for me, um, actually, I really feel how... Yeah, my energy is so sacred to myself. Mm -hmm. So I'm very mindful um, uh -huh. before I would open sexually to someone. And also for myself, it's, um, it's been a journey to, to, to get out of the pattern that, for example, when you have, let's say, a sensual dance, that that's where it can end and there doesn't have to be anything else. Or there can be also a sensual hugging or some kind of connection but that doesn't mean that it has to go so far into any kind of penetration because it's a big uh, another step where you exchange energy mm -hmm. so i'm very mindful of that and um yeah again i'm too sensitive to <laughs> to kind of just be super loose and uh for me also i'm yeah i need to really feel really love for someone to open sexually and i feel in that way it has helped me immensely to work with my body because uh, there's so many conditionings like really so so many from my life from my ancestors life so for myself i noticed when i started interaction interacting sexually you know, as a teenager, it was so hard for me, for example, to speak, to like mm -hmm. say what I want or what I don't want. It's like my throat was just closed. So I would have really, honestly, not so nice experiences where my boundaries would be crossed over and over. And internally, I'm like, what am I doing? But I can't even bring mm -hmm. a word out. Mm -hmm. um, so it was a big journey to learn. I think learn. that's very crucial what you just said. Like, yeah. It's also like, you know, this is my boundary. I don't want it. Yeah. And I think in particular women, we were not taught to speak up in that way and say, mm -hmm. no, this is not what I want here right exactly. now. Exactly. And it needs to be <clears throat> brave to, again, show the boundaries. Um, you mentioned sensuality. I think sensuality is very important mm -hmm. for me, at least when mm -hmm. it comes also to a kind of sexual exchange. Mm -hmm. And I totally agree. Mm -hmm. um, I'm very cautious with whom I exchange the sexual energy because mm -hmm. it's so long lasting, because it's a very, very deep connection. Mm -hmm. So tell me, like when you had sensual dances, mm -hmm. right? Is there anything where you would say it's a kind of indies for you? how it will be later in case you continue this relationship mm. when it comes to sexuality. Mm -hmm. Do you like the touch or the way you are moved while you are dancing? Mm -hmm. Does it give you an idea how it might be later in case you mm -hmm. go on with that person mm. to a deeper stage of exchange? 
Yeah, yes, and and then there's exceptions. <laughs> <laughs> like this. Yeah. So generally, if if someone is like an embodied woman or man, I think has naturally mm. kind of an intuitional understanding of the body, mm. and you can feel that when you dance. So definitely it, it can be like, you know, <laughs> a help to, to see that if you can't connect with someone, maybe on a dance floor, maybe not later. But I wouldn't say that that's um, always the case, not at all, mm -hmm. but it, it can be. And um, the, the, the exceptions also, um, which I've uh, observed or experienced, is that there's also a mastery of let's say like learning you know how mm -hmm. to touch a man or a woman mm -hmm. and then you think like oh yeah this is amazing but uh sometimes that, but then it gets sometimes like too nearly like technical and for me um you know there needs to be a connection um on all levels of my being with someone to mm -hmm. go further so i can for example have a really hot dance and then I, I call it like my animal my lower chakras are like fully turned on and it's juicy <clears throat> but I can't feel any heart connection to this person mm. then I couldn't go on uh, you know how is that person then reacting because <laughs> if you are now mm -hmm. able to say mm. um, no that's not what I want it's mm -hmm. until here mm -hmm. we had our mm -hmm. pleasure each mm -hmm. other we enjoyed the mm -hmm. sensual mm -hmm. dance but I want to go home on my own mm -hmm. and I will not see you again. Mm -hmm. So if the other person gets that idea from you, mm -hmm. he f might feel rejected. Yeah. So the ego is showing up. Totally. Mm -hmm. How do you deal the best in that kind of situation? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's where we really need to have this radical self-love and to trust that when we are, you know, living our truth and speaking our truth, um, we actually can't hurt anyone in a way because yeah the ego is is an illusion mm -hmm. and um also we know that we're not making any there's no um benefit in you know <laughs> like it's it's not even possible mm -hmm. it's just not possible but i think in in that way we are also educating each other mm -hmm. actually so if if you know if i would say to someone like yeah thank you for the dance and that's it i'm going home and you know this mm -hmm. person maybe would want to be closer and i just say it then it's like either this person has the opportunity to go into like victim and be pissed off and like you know or they could be like oh that's interesting like celebrating that i can um communicate my healthy boundaries and being grateful for what we shared so in that way we actually raising consciousness and we're raising the vibration because we need mm. to live in that way to just say thank mm. you for every conversation say thank you for every interaction and not mm. already make this whole story of what this means and mm. i think that's a big problem in like i call it the mainstream dance scene which is like mostly in the clubs mostly with a lot of um alcohol or even drugs and often people go with some kind of goal of getting someone into the bed and having this kind of um you know uh, how do you say like um mm. fix mm. <laughs> their sexual fix and uh that's something that really yeah makes me sad it hurts my heart honestly because in that way i can see how the power that we would have to connect together and to mm -hmm. celebrate consciously and to uplift each other, to set healthy boundaries. It's just like everything is misused for mm -hmm. like egoistic reasons. And there's more mm -hmm. and more, again, mm -hmm. unhealthy patterns and trauma that comes out because, you know, like, yeah, some people then they drink so much that then they don't even know where they're going or they get mm -hmm. some kind of um, drugs mm -hmm. put into their drinks and they, you know, something happens. Mm -hmm. and. Yeah, I guess that's just also a mirror of the world where we are. We are in a big transformation and we've come far away from living um, from the heart and in honoring mm -hmm. of, of each other as humans to choose the human first and, and you know, honoring that. I like it. And I like yeah. also what you what you said, like it's not all about penetration at the end, mm -hmm. right? There is so much more and there mm -hmm. are so many different layers of yeah. getting connected on a human level mm -hmm. to have an exchange. It does not need to land on a bat or to have a relationship afterwards. It can mm -hmm. be that very special moment of awareness and mm -hmm. strong connection. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Totally. Even when as a consequence one has to detach 
afterwards. This is always the challenge because there comes then the ego again. <laughs> Like yesterday, I went to ecstatic dance mm -hmm. and I was at the end, I was just sitting there at the very end and I had the big luck of observing two dancers mm -hmm. and they were so incredibly beautiful. It mm -hmm. was an improvised dance and they were on the floor, they were touching, they were, mm -hmm. it was, it was pure beautiness and you mm -hmm. could see how strong their bound was. Mm -hmm. As I learned afterwards, because I of course watched them, they were not together, it was not a couple, they separated, they were hugging and they were just leaving the scene but while they were dancing there was so much fire that mm. was erotic and i could see it mm -hmm. with this ah oh, it was soft and mm -hmm. it was sensual so i think that's very important to understand that it can be there in that moment and it's it's good mm. without any obligation mm -hmm. yeah and then again to detach mm -hmm. how do you detach mm -hmm. how do you detach when you maybe had one of those beautiful dances mm -hmm. and then it's over mm -hmm. but you would like to continue mm -hmm. what, do you do? <laughs> what do i do what do you do well i think i've practiced it quite a few times and i i choose to stay excited and i choose to keep the energy high mm. so i kind of i try and I, f I try and flip the coin, you know, so I have the choice. It's like, okay, I had this most amazing hot dance and I like just, <laughs> you know, in my heart, I'm like, oh God, I just fell in love and I, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, already want to marry, like this. <laughs> marry this person, <laughs> you know, let's just go right down the lane and like want to ask, do you want to have kids? No, <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'm just like over exaggerating. But, but then, so either I can go into, I want more, more, more. Um, but I've but I've practiced to just say wow thank you so much and then I try to slow it down and it's kind of dropping into kind of a bit like a meditation mm -hmm. so to f to 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 just slow it down and then coming back to my own body which mm -hmm. means like breathing okay feeling my breath mm. ah you know giving myself this big exhale and then feeling the tingling in the body and the liveness and the juiciness. And then just going into like, wow, what an amazing manifestation this was. Like, thank you, universe. That was like the best dance of my life. And and then, you know, um, basically just cultivating the energy within me. And, and, and it's a practice. I honestly have to say it's not always been easy to go down that road because it's very easy to go down the road of like oh no I want more and now he's going away and oh no he has another woman and <laughs> yes. la 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 <laughs> and then yeah and then we we have a lot of suffering coming up and I yeah. I mean you know I've done it so many times yeah. but it's really a practice to like it's like a pause mm. give gr gratitude mm. and then come back to the breath and then sometimes I even go home and I would continue the party with myself I would like <laughs> dance around I have no doubt I would continue to feel him I couldn't yeah. go into a self-pleasuring I like and I mean my fantasy can be big you know like mm. it's uh it's up to me what I want to do with my energy but I kind of try to take responsibility to keep my energy high and then um, we go into the topic of manifestation so if I really like this person I could still for example say all right wow I feel this is something that I really wanted to desire so mm -hmm. I can like start to write you know a little mantra that I repeat uh, before mm -hmm. I go to bed and in the morning and say Universe, please provide me with a man that makes me feel exactly like this. It was so, so uplifting, my spirit, my body, my soul. I'm really grateful to have this experience, you know, in the next week again or soon again. And, and with the potential of come, uh, making that connection, you know, flow into a relationship if this is what I want. So I think it's like, yeah, it's a practice to mm -hmm. take these uh, moments which can be either like, a fuel where you can see ah this is actually in such resonance with my being that it's showing me um what i actually mm -hmm. want and not to go into oh i don't have it now but actually you just had it like that's mm -hmm. the only uh, reality it's like what what is the you know what you just experienced is the only truth and um we have to practice to be not attached to like one person that's a thing and i think that's sometimes what creates suffering and we've all done it and i've done it so many times that i think oh only this man can touch me exactly like this and i want like, to be with him because he's the cutest and blah 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 but um you know at the end i trust and that has to do with my or our connection to to spirit is 
I trust that the universe in the right time will provide me with a partner mm. that is exactly in alignment with all that I am. And, you know, so it's, it's a practice to, to navigate these moments when you feel attached. And on the other hand, we can also just be honest, right? We can also just go and say, hey, this was like the best dance of my life. I would love to dance with you again. Are you up for it? And then see what comes back. And then maybe that's all it needed because sometimes... The other person's shy and I also feel as women we need to speak up for our needs and also be okay if there's like actually mm. I'm not interested like all right you know your own your your need and often people are very happy or men are also happy to to, mm. to to receive that feedback that we really enjoyed a mm. connection or something mm. yeah <laughs> so beautiful ideas mm -hmm. to keep the uplifting to keep the energy within you mm -hmm. right to come home self pleasure mm -hmm. to go into fantasies i mean again what is reality mm -hmm. yeah, we may be all living in certain bubbles <laughs> and i so underline what you said and that's also my experience if i'm interested in somebody i just go approach mm -hmm. and ask mm -hmm. what can happen is just a rejection mm -hmm. and this is not the end of the world mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. it's like what we just said before mm -hmm. like we should be able to say no i don't want this mm -hmm. but then you also have to accept that you receive a no right exactly <laughs> <laughs> yeah and i think it's a practice um i mean i've done you know some tantra courses where we yeah. practice to say the healthy yes, yes. no i was thinking that yeah. you did it right because yeah, i did yeah. it as well i yeah. thought this kind of sounds so familiar <laughs> yeah totally yeah. but i mean i feel what we learn in these um in these workshops And also when I do like women's immersions, mainly I, I teach also these things to, to, to uh, reactivate mm -hmm. the healthy no and to feel safe in yeah. saying no, to take a hand away and say like, I don't want this. And that rewires our whole brain mm -hmm. and it makes us feel safe to do that. And once we actually um, allow us to mm -hmm. say no, we also can receive it much more. And I celebrate like every no from someone mm -hmm. because at the end of the day again we practice not to be attached because you know that's not going to lead us anywhere and, and and i think the more we're on this journey of, of living our truth and understanding that we're all free beings um you know growing together there is this feeling of this big like i would say like soul community around every being that's open to, to drop into that field um, where we're taken care of and we meet the right people in the right moment and you know you know get the most beautiful dances when we when we want to have that um, and uh, yeah I, I guess I'm just feeling again also of course to have these dances yeah we need to for example feel comfortable also you know in the body and all these things so these are the areas where I also feel passionate to support I mainly have women in my classes but to support them mm. to feel really like yeah just comfortable how they are now and that they're lovable and and that's actually what's the most attractive mm. thing you know in life yeah <laughs> so true so mm. true and it now brings me up an experience that i made years ago mm -hmm. in impro contact dance uh -huh. i felt so uncomfortable mm. yeah. cool it was very hot no mm. one was allowed to have any deal or parfum. The people were half naked mm -hmm. and then they were dancing. Mm. And they were so good dancing. And mm. I was desperately looking how to escape that situation. Mm -hmm. Suddenly someone came and started to dance with me. It was mm -hmm. the first time wow. like, you were touched by a stranger mm -hmm. and you danced with your hands. Wow, challenge. I was totally in my mind. Mm -hmm. At a point, a couple of minutes after, where I let myself go. Mm. I was really deeply in that mm -hmm. dance with him. You know what happened? Mm -mm. He left me. Mm -hmm. I couldn't believe it. I had my eyes closed. I needed to open them. And I saw him dancing with another woman. <laughs> so apparently he has started while I was totally in the flow mm -hmm. with his other hands dancing mm -hmm. with another woman. Mm -hmm. This was so hurting, mm -hmm. but so enriching for me because mm -hmm. it was the fear of being rejected because mm -hmm. I opened myself mm -hmm. in a totally new discipline, right? Mm -hmm. Dancing with a stranger. Mm -hmm. And... I was a bit traumatized. Mm -hmm. Maybe you, I don't know whether you can understand. I can't relate It was a really so big thing because no, dancing is something I just don't know. Right? I can totally relate, yeah. And it helped me. It mm -hmm. helped me because with each, with that no, mm -hmm. you, you, you learn so much about yourself mm -hmm. because at the end it was my ego. Mm -hmm. Like, he, he left me alone. It was this childish Karina <laughs> yeah. that was here. Like, <laughs> I'm on my own now, yeah. you know? Yeah. 
No, it's it's true. Like I can I can mm-hmm. totally relate. Oh, such an experience. So much. It's it's uh, uncomfortable. And I mean, for me, honestly, when I started also with contact and touch, it was very uh, strange. Mm-hmm. I also had to break through these um, wow. conditionings mm-hmm. that touch is just for like you and your partner. Right. And I mean, mm-hmm. and again, I totally respect everyone who lives like touch is just for me and my partner. That's totally mm-hmm. okay. But I have to also honor my truth and mm-hmm. I'm not like that. Like for me, and maybe it's a bit the Jamaican side, but it's definitely just who I am. For me, it's very natural to like, you know, touch yeah. a sister's shoulder or, you know, just supporting each other. And um, the body, the body, my body wants to express. And also it's like a playful way to connect, you know. Mm-hmm. So I can totally relate to that experience. Mm-hmm. And um I think it's a practice to move through it. But mm. isn't it so amazing that on these dance floors we can work through these um like real life challenges mm. yeah, which absolutely. have so much to do with relating absolutely. and how do I feel in the world? How am I standing on my two legs? Do I feel comfortable? Mm. Do, do I not? Am I, you know, more in my head? Can I drop into mm. the body? Like what do I do when I feel sexual energy? Oh, is there shame or not? Is someone mm. watching? You know, like it's yes. like all these topics. It's like this whole conversation going yes. on. <laughs> Totally. I was astonished. <laughs> like again, I've just started a couple of years ago with this dance, with a sensual dance mm-hmm. with a stranger, this mm-hmm. tantra, all mm-hmm. that, the ecstatic mm-hmm. dance. And again, mm-hmm. it's not about penetri- penetration mm-hmm. or anything that happens after. Mm-hmm. I was astonished about the language of dance. Mm-hmm. I wasn't aware mm-hmm. because all those things you raised, mm-hmm. yeah, they were all coming up there. Yeah. Am I judged? Am I good enough? Of course. Right? Mm-hmm. all that so mm-hmm. it takes courage it to takes go on courage. it takes courage to go on these dance floors mm-hmm. and i mean really yeah it's a it's a big it's a big step to be you're very vulnerable there because you can't you can't act to be someone anymore mm-hmm. you know you're just there there's music playing no one is talking like i'm talking about ecstatic dance right now mm-hmm. but it's like really just to feel and to move from that inner mm. dance space, you know? And I think um, it takes quite a bit of uh, mm. courage to, to be in this space and then actually to enjoy mm. it. Like yeah. you can be in there and you can still like act as if you're a cool, fancy dancer, but actually mm. I've had also dances that were just like a torture because I was in my head mm. and I was like looking or I was like maybe in love with someone and then he's like <laughs> dancing with someone else and I feel like heartbroken and <laughs> it, it can be like a real nightmare uh, mm. what happens. <laughs> so, it sounds so familiar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we're all being through it. But I think it's again, it's showing yeah. up. It's a practice. The like ecstatic again. dances, they should be taught in school from the oh, very yeah, beginning totally. because there's everything in to make yeah. the human journey complete. I agree. <laughs> no, I totally agree. And that's a thing because you can, everything is allowed and the body will show you what it needs. Mm-hmm. If it needs to be shaking, if mm-hmm. you need to jump around like a frog or if you want to be very soft and slow, mm-hmm. moving like the water. And the more we are tuned in, our body wisdom comes mm-hmm. through. And mm-hmm. I think that's what I'm so passionate about to awaken mm-hmm. uh, the body wisdom in each and every one because the more we're switched on in our body um, and it's kind of like, you know, I feel like the soul or the intuition shows itself through feeling mm-hmm. or sensations in the body. We would be just having a lot less issues in the yeah. world because we were like, oh, no, this doesn't feel good. Or, oh, wow, I feel tightness in my belly. Okay, let's shake it out and sound. And it's just like normal. And it's true. Yeah. That's what kids, you know, should be learning. And I think when they're really small, they do it naturally like they're la, 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 la they do like mm. funny things yeah they release energy and sound a lot and and move around and dance like my nephews definitely do <laughs> but you know I think really that should yeah. be taught and also yeah. when I was yeah. a primary school teacher that was something I mean I was lucky to teach a lot also uh, in like sports classes mm-hmm. and I would teach them dance and I would tell you the kids how they would love it when they can dance you know of mm-hmm. course they still love to learn new steps but they love it when they can mm-hmm. just be mm-hmm. free and dance and be actually a child like finally mm-hmm. just be who they mm-hmm. are and if you watch them every child knows exactly what they need to do it's amazing you know they're so in tune and 
I would say yes. Let's you know if every <laughs> school would incorporate like a kind of a free ecstatic dance space for the children with the rules, oh, with with the boundaries, with the silence. Um, we would actually teach um, young humans to stay in touch with themselves and take responsibility of how they feel and that they have the power to express themselves mm -hmm. through movement and through the body. And that's really like, I pray that more and more this can happen, you know. Oh, you know how I feel. I still want to go dancing now. With yeah, you. right. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. I'm like, we're ready. <laughs> yes, we're so ready. Yeah. Thank you so much mm. for recapturing. Like, you put it so well in words, but mm. I've experienced the last couple of years when yeah. I dared myself being on this dance floor, in particular the ecstatic dances yeah. and the contact dances. Yeah. So special, right? Yeah. Yeah. I learned so much in mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed the conversation. Yeah, It same. was such a pleasure. Such a pleasure. Really. Thank you so much also. Um, it was It's really beautiful to share with you. Mm. Mm. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, too much more dance in this yeah. world and for us. How do you feel? Great. I do and I feel like yes. activated. Activated. <laughs> mm, this was quite a choosy conversation. Jelena just left and I feel like I want to go dancing. I'm very curious on what you could take away from the episode. Please leave a comment here, review and subscribe to my channel. If you want to find more out about Jelena, you can find her on Instagram, Jelena Devi, and also some more info here in the show notes. I do wish you now a beautiful rest day. And of course, keep on shining. Yours, Corina Rosa. <laughs>